Welcome to the Thanksgiving edition to the Row by Row Garden Show. Welcome to the Row by Row Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And it is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, can you believe it? Already. Already, yep. This is our Thanksgiving edition. It's going to be a little bit different, just a tad bit different than what we normally do. But we want to take just a moment to tell you, and we've not shared this with one another, we're going to share with you one thing each that we're thankful for. Okay. And I'll go first. All right. Okay. One thing that I am thankful for, you know, we can, we can look out there and find a lot of things that we're not thankful for. But sometimes we just need to zone in on the things that we're thankful for. I lost my mother about four weeks ago, and she was 84 years old. I am thankful, and my father's 85, and he lives by himself now. But I am thankful that I had both of my parents till they was in their 80s. I'm thankful for that, too. What I'm thankful for is our little piece of heaven here. Our home, our farm. And all our animals. Get all the I know. <laughs> you should have told me you was going to do that about your mom. That was mean. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, and one thing that together yeah. we are thankful for is the fact that we have you guys. Mm -hmm. That you guys have allowed us to be a part of your lives and we're able to share our experience of being able to help you and you also can help others and us as a community are helping people grow their own food, get out of the house and get on the cell phones and get outside and enjoy God's creation and be good at something that we do. Yeah, we, we appreciate you and all your comments and your encouragement. You can be feeling really down in the dumps and I would say 99% of our comments are very positive and thanking us for doing what we're doing and we're doing what we're doing because of you because we want to help you. We started this in 2009. Yep. And it's been a bumpy. Yep. A bumpy road. <laughs> it's been not, fun. It's been fun, not all good, but um it's all because of you and we're very thankful Heck for that. Yeah. Yep. So we want you to sit back and enjoy a walk through of our gardens, walk through of Mama Hoss's garden, walk through of my garden. We can show you what we got going on this time of the year. Come back and join us, and we're going to do the old goat drawing. Well, here's our little 20 by 20 spot, a little garden that we put in back during the spring, just to show folks how much garden you can grow in a little bitty spot like a 20 by 20. So the cold weather is probably going to get some of this and we transition into some more crops. See right here, I had broccoli here. We harvested all that broccoli. So what? I planted some, uh, some beets back in there. So we'll get these beets up and they should do fine in the cold weather. Some of my cherry tomatoes that you see right here and man, they are loaded up. Oh, look at there. All kinds of tomatoes in there. We're probably going to lose most of those to Mr. Cold. He's going to take them out. And our peppers will get moved on out too and cold to get them. And we'll plant something else back in this area right in here. Our kohlrabi is about gone. This right here is the quick start variety. Oh, look how huge that thing is. Those need harvesting. We've been sharing them with family and friends. And we had our cucumbers right there, a little trellis area. We'll plant something back there as well. There we have asperbrock. We have our zinnias, nice and pretty, and those are pretty good. Mr. Cole to get them in a day or two. And we got cabbage over here, two different kinds of cabbage. We got three raised beds in this garden. And man, I'm going to tell you, we can uh, do succession planting in here because we manage this thing pretty well. But you can grow a lot. I'm just amazed how much you can grow off a 20 by 20 spot. It's been an eye-opening experience for me. Well, here's our butter beans, running butter beans. We planted these back during the springtime and they're winding down. We've been harvesting these for seeds. And this is that heirloom butter bean that we got over in Alabama back during the springtime. A customer shared them with us and we've been pretty well amazed with them. Just to give you an idea of what they look like, it is a speckled butter bean, but it's not the large. It's just a regular sized butter bean or llama bean as some people may say. 
But what's unusual to me is to find a pole bean, pole butter bean, that is a smaller butter bean. So we found this extremely interesting. We trialed it here all summer long, and it is doing really good. We got a pretty good seed crop off of it, so we'll be able to share some of these seeds with y'all in the coming up years. Um, these butter bean seeds should store for several years, and uh, we got a pretty decent crop there. Well, here's our onion plot. We got our tom onions coming on there. I think we got five rows of those, about 40 foot long. They were growing really well. Planted those probably about a month ago. And those things sprouted through the ground in no time. And we got a row of elephant garlic. I didn't plant too much elephant garlic last year. My horse got on to me, said she needed some elephant garlic. So I planted a long row of that this year. Besides that, we have a new type of spinach that we're trialing out called Imperial Beach. This right here is a larger leaf, classified as an Italian type spinach. So uh, we're growing it out, see how well it does. So far it's doing pretty good. I had a little spot right there that I got too much fertilizer on to burn up, but everything else looks pretty good. And right here is our Vidalia, short day onions that we just planted. They're struggling right now a little bit, but we got some fertilizer on them and in a few days they'll be taken off nice and green. So here's another new product we got coming out for next year. We're really focusing on helping people that don't have much room or experience growing a garden to get started and looking at, you know, what their pain points is, what keeps them from growing their own food and trying to solve that. So we're bringing this mat on for next year. We've got two different sizes. This is a 15 by 30 with an irrigation system and we got some things planted in there we got some peas planted there we got some let's see there that's some uh, radishes right there roxanne radish we got merlin beet coming along we got some detroit red radishes and look there the carrots got carrots coming along nice two types of zinnias that we're trialing out these are smaller type border or container zinnias that are really really make a splash Mr. Cold's probably going to get those tonight, unfortunately, but they have uh, done pretty well. Got a couple of rows of strawberries there. And we got some green magic broccoli coming along. Love that green magic variety. Lacinato kale, or some as you call it, dinosaur kale. And we got some quick store kohlrabi. Man, that stuff grows so fast. If you don't get out of the way, it'll grow over you. And Godzilla broccoli. Got two rows of broccoli. I love to plant this Godzilla in the, you know, in the middle of the winter time. It does really well for us, but it's a huge head. And we got a real twister cauliflower. You got to have a little cauliflower in your garden. And look at the collards there. Now, this is top bunch. We love top bunch. It's probably our favorite collard. But we got another one come along. I'll show you in just a minute. Here is a little patch of Super B Flacilia. Man, this stuff makes a nice, nice bush on there that crowds out your weeds. We got some volunteer sunflowers coming up in there. Mr. Cole to take care of them sunflowers tonight and uh, supposed to get down to 26 degrees, so they'll be gone. But this Super B Flacilia will take it down into the low 20s, so it'll be fine. Next thing you know, this stuff will be blooming. It's a great, great plant for pollinators in the late fall where they're struggling to have feed or anything to feed on. We'd love to grow this super beef facilia for that. Has a lot of other benefits as well. Scavenges a lot of nutrients. So one of my favorite cover crops to plant late fall and early spring. And here's some more collards and calards. So this collard right here is a new one for us called Top Chop. And we're trialing it out this year. I think it's going to be a good one. It doesn't bolt as much as the other one I showed you earlier, the, the uh, top bunch. So it, it's better for growing in the springtime when it gets a little warm or early in the fall. So it's going to be a good one to work into different rotations there. I think it's going to be a really good collard. And then we have this baby right here. I got a whole row of these. Folks, this right here is a new one. It's called Kalerds. It's a cross between a collard and a kale. And that's the reason we call it kalerds. Trialing this baby out, see how well it does. It's interesting to say the least. 
So that's pretty much what we got growing on in the Hoss garden right now. We're kind of in that transition period where we're still growing some stuff, onions and things like that. College, we'd love to grow in the winter time to cold weather. And yeah, we're thinking about what we're gonna plant in the spring. Thanks for joining us. As we walk on the right side of the garden, I have butterfly bushes, a pretty yellow blooming, it's called a peanut tree. It really don't produce peanuts, but I've had it for 15 years. My knockout roses, some yellow roses. Look how gorgeous that is. Now, it is the week, the Thursday before Thanksgiving, a week before Thanksgiving. And tonight, we're expecting our first freezing weather. It's supposed to get down to 30 tonight. So I wanted to give you a look at what it looks like before it freezes tonight. These carrots in this grow bag are Oxart carrots. I planted those with you several months ago. Here are my peppers, which I'm going to have to gather this afternoon because I do not want those to freeze. And this is the Aren't You Sweet right on red and yes to yellow. And these were planted in the spring and they're still going strong. Look at the zinnias. It's called a blanket flower and we hope to carry those next year. It just looks like an orange blanket. I'm tempted to cover those up. They are just gorgeous. Next to the zinnias, we have our garlic. And this is elephant garlic doing well. And it's okay that it's went ahead and put on the green leaves. Here in the south, it'll be fine. I have some lettuce, and that is a romaine lettuce. And here are my beets, touchstone gold beets. And they're in grow bags also. On the other side of the zinnias, I have some cilantro, the fall cucumbers that I need to pick the last few of. There's a hollyhock that comes back every year. Next is my English peas. And these are called Mr. Big Pea, growing up here on the trellis. And they should be fine tonight also. And in the middle, I did some companion planting with some kale. Here's my broccoli. I did already gather it today and I planted some basil in between the broccoli and I've harvested it a few times already and I'll be sure to gather it before tonight. On the side here I have my citrus trees, I have a key lime, and a lemon. And last but not least is my sasuma tree that only had three fruits on it last year. And I was going to cut it down, but decided not to. It is loaded. The branches are bending over. And these will need to be harvested tonight also. I don't want them to be out here in the freeze. Hope you enjoyed that little tour. Um, that was before the frost and the little freeze. Or as I call him, Mr. Cold hit us. Yeah, before Mr. Cold hit us. Um, the day, or yeah, the night of Mr. Cold hit us. So it does look a little bit different now. Yep. Old goat. Old goat drawing, ready? 
You want to tell them what old goat is? The old goat is a figurine on the set here somewhere. And if you find the old goat, put in the comments below where that old goat is. And we'll do a draw in the week after this show and choose a name. And if we choose your name, then we send you a prize in the mail. So this week's winner is... David... Well, I had it backwards. David Ward. David, send us your shipping address to CustServe. There we go. All right, David. Send us your shipping address, CustServeHostools.com. And we will get you a nice little prize set in the mail. Uh, I got a little update on some products. All right. So we're finishing up. This week is finishing up our onion thing. Onions are gone over with short day onions. It's time to move on. Within a couple weeks, within a couple weeks, we will be offering pre-sales of Irish potatoes. And I know folks, it's here before you know it, but it's going to be time to plant potatoes right after the first year. We went ahead and secured our potato crop for next year, and we're going to go ahead and do pre-sales. We'll have our first shipment in the middle of January for you guys down in the deep south. Same so, kind we had last year? I believe it is the same variety. Are we yep. going to have the sampler? We are going to have a sampler, but samplers are a little different this year. Yep. Okay, stay tuned for that. Yep. Corny joke. Corny joke. Because it's Thanksgiving. Because it's Thanksgiving. Which side of the turkey has the most feathers? Top side. Outside. <laughs> Oh, I got you on that one. <laughs> yep. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us, and we dearly, sincerely hope that you have a happy Thanksgiving. Now, after the Thanksgiving's over, it's going to be time for you to get off that couch and get outside and get dirty.